Good morning, Baker Chapel. Merry Christmas. I hope your Christmas Eve or your Christmas morning were just absolutely wonderful. I know you made sacrifices this year, but I know you made the most of it. I know you made it special. It's not been like it was in, in years past, but after all, Christmas still comes and Christmas came. And in fact, Christmas continues until January 6th on Epiphany. And so the Christ candle continues to burn. In fact, the light of Christ continues to burn inside of us and through us all of the time. And that's worth celebrating all year long. Well, the bishop in Indiana has given his pastors of the conference a gift. And that gift is a worship service prepared by the conference in order to give the pastors a break during this hectic and busy time of year. So enjoy the gift as I will. And welcome to our extended cabinet worship experience. It is the first Sunday after Christmas and we are in this Christmas season where we have unwrapped the gifts and we have celebrated the birth of hope in this world. I hope that we will be able to prepare our hearts and minds for what we will experience throughout this worship encounter. Here now is the time for worship. Our scripture today is from Psalm 118, verses 1 through 7 and verses 27 through 29, and read by a lady all over the Indiana Southeast District. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. 이제 여호와를 경외하는 자는 말하기를 그의 인자하심이 영원하다 할지로다. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. Out of my distress I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God. I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. <laughs>
Old Testament reading is from Psalm 98, verses 1 through 6. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. His right hand has won a mighty victory. His holy army has shown his saving power. The Lord has announced his victory and has revealed his righteousness to every nation. He has remembered his promise to love and be faithful to Israel. The ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break out in praise and sing for joy. Sing your praises to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with the trumpet and the song of the ram's horn. Make a joyful symphony before the Lord, the King. children's message from two wound-up children. 
Let's watch. Hi friends, I'm Lori Blaine Gibson, and these are my friends. Magnolia and Genevieve. Magnolia and Genevieve are going to help me talk about baby Jesus today and Christmas, right? Yeah. Right. So if you are a kid or you have a kid in your house, gather them around so they can hear. Maybe they will be able to tell you about Christmas when this is all over. Okay, so answer me this. Before we even get started with Jesus, were you ever born? Yes. yes. You were born? Yeah. We have to be born because where where did we come from if we weren't born? Well, that's a good point. We would come from a planet. You could come from a planet. Like another planet. Like, um, like another like another house. Right. To, to a new house. Magnolia, will you tell us all about Christmas? I really think that Christmas is awesome because like you get presents and you get to put up stockings on the Christmas tree. And I really, really like because, because my, my goal this Christmas is, is trying to like, like get Google to like um hear um Santa's um Santa coming on the house. Mm-hmm. And I think that um and I'm going to tell her to send an alarm when when he, when he um comes in the house and it'll go off when he comes in the house and then I'll wake up and see Santa. So that's that's what I'm trying to do. And I think it will work because. Um, I have not experienced, um, um, that way of getting to see Santa, so yeah. So, so you're thinking a lot about Christmas trees and presents and Santa, but let's talk about what Christmas is really about. Like, you were born. Yeah. When was Christmas born? <laughs> Let me give you a hint. Remember oh. that story? Christmas was born when Jesus was born. And what does Jesus got to do with Christmas? He was born on Christmas Day. Well, that's what we celebrate. On Christmas, we celebrate his birth. So I just want us to remember something really important. In the Bible, when it's talking about Jesus, it's talking about God. So where Jesus is, God is. Now think about that a minute. Where Jesus is, God is. Where is Jesus on Christmas? In the bed. He's in this, yeah, he's in the straw manger. So where is God? In the straw manger. He's here, right? He's right here on earth with us. God wants us to know when we see the baby in the manger that where God is, is with us. Not far away, not in the dark or in the light of the universe, but here too, with us. So when we're sad, where is God? With us. When we're happy, where is God? Why can't we see him? I don't know. Because he's in heaven. And he's not rich or powerful or famous. He's just a baby. Yeah. So you don't, do you have, are you afraid of babies? No. no. You don't have to be afraid of God either, right? You're afraid of monster babies. Is he a monster baby? No. No, he's not a monster baby. That's right. And babies need what? They need love. And what and else? care. And care. Do you think God is with everybody just like he's with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think you could ask the kids at home to tell the Christmas story to their families? Yes. Ask Tell the Christmas um, story to, to, your, to your parents, and your parents will be very glad you know, you know it. That's very true. And do you think you could remind the kids, if they're not feeling so great, that God is with them? God is, God is always with you. I want to just say goodbye, and thank you for listening to all of the things we've said. I know somewhere in there, you know, just like they know, that Jesus being born is really good news because it means that God is with us and will help us and guide us through everything. I know you know that, and I know they know it. So we need to tell everybody. Go tell your parents the Christmas story. But wait till the bishop is done preaching. Let's pray. God, we thank you for sending Jesus to show us how much you love us. We thank you for sending Jesus to show us that you are with us in good times and bad times. And even though we're imperfect and don't have everything figured out, 
You still love us. Amen. Amen. From the Common English Bible, the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news. For all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel, praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 그때 가이사 아구스도가 영을 내려 천하로 다 호적하라 하였으니 이 호적은 구레뇨가 수리아 총독이 되었을 때 처음 한 것이라 모든 사람이 호적하러 각각 고향으로 돌아가매 요셉도 다윗의 집 족속이므로 갈릴리 나사렛 동네에서 유대를 향하여 베들레헴이라 하는 다윗의 동네로 그 약혼한 마리아와 함께 호적하러 올라가니 마리아가 이미 잉태하였더라 거기 있을 그때에 해산할 날이 차서 첫 아들을 낳아 강보로 싸서 구유에 누였으니 이는 여관에 있을 곳이 없음이러라 그 지역의 목자들이 밤에 밖에서 자기 양떼를 지키더니 주의 천사가 곁에 서고 주의 영광이 그들을 두루 비추매 크게 무서워하는지라 천사가 이르되 무서워하지 말라 보라 내가 온 백성에게 미칠 큰 기쁨의 좋은 소식을 너희에게 전하노라 오늘 다윗의 동네에 너희를 위하여 구주가 나셨으니 곧 그리스도 주시니라 너희가 가서 강보에 쌓여 구유에 누여 있는 아기를 보리니 이것이 너희에게 표적이니라 하더니 호련히 수많은 천군이 그 천사들과 함께 하나님을 찬송하여 이르되 지극히 높은 곳에서는 하나님께 영광이요 땅에서는 하나님이 기뻐하신 사람들 중에 평화로다 하니라 
천사들이 떠나 하늘로 올라가니 목자가 서로 말하되 이제 베들레헴으로 가서 주께서 우리에게 알리신 바이 이루어진 일을 보자 하고 빨리 가서 마리아와 요셉과 구유의 누인 아기를 찾아서 보고 천사가 자기들에게 이 아기에 대하여 말한 것을 전하니 듣는 자가 다 목자들이 그들에게 말한 것들을 놀랍게 여기되 마리아는 이 모든 말을 마음에 새겨 생각하니라 목자들은 자기들에게 이르던 바와 같이 듣고 본그 모든 것으로 인하여 하나님께 영광을 돌리고 찬송하며 돌아가니라 Good news, a baby is born. Whenever a baby is born in our family, which is probably true in your family as well, there's good news that goes around. Everybody's happy to hear about the announcement of a birth. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, the baby who was born that changed everything. I greet you on behalf of United Methodists in the state of Indiana and all of the people who look forward to the birth of Jesus Christ. Let me begin this message by sharing a poem I have written entitled, I Am Listening. I am listening, don't tell me, be not afraid. Do you know my story, both pain and glory? Do you know what year it is, 2020? Sickness, loss, death, need I say there has been plenty? Do not fear as our flight passes through turbulence. We are in this together by choice and by chance. Separation, isolation, questions no one answers. Tears no one sees. So don't dismiss me in this moment as though I am invisible. I am hungry. Don't tell me, be not afraid. Give me fresh bread, friendship, and hope. I am lonely. Not for more news, missing their touch, how long, God, it feels like too much. But today I am here, unmasked from my fear. So you have my attention, be clear. So tell me a story that I may hold on. Look up and be glad and stay woke with hope and remember this year, I am alive, we are alive for Christmas. The Annunciation of Jesus' birth, the People's New Testament commentary shares about Matthew and Luke's gospel. God's initiative and surprising grace chooses a young unmarried woman from an obscure village to be the mother of the Son of God. In Matthew's gospel, Joseph is highlighted in the birth story. In Luke's profession, Mary and Elizabeth have leading roles in the story. But dearly beloved, this Advent season, this Christmas, I want you to remember the central character of the story of Advent. Jesus, who is the reason for the season, the Christmas gift for the people. As the gospel writer John proclaims, the Word has become flesh. It is the baby who changes everything. Matthew, the first chapter from the New Revised Standard Version, reads this way, beginning at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. 
When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Gift number one, Jesus is born. A gift, a child, a blessing that changes everything. Luke 2, from the Common English Bible, beginning verse 1, in those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinus governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Gift number two. The baby is born for everybody. Nobody is too poor. Nobody is too rich. Born in a manger, in a grotto, in a cave. Luke 2, verse 8 through 14. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angels said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of heavenly forces was with the angel. They praising God and they sang glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Gift number three, we have been granted peace from heaven and favor here on earth. Glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Luke's recount of the nativity story is described with the backdrop of ancient Roman history. Emperor Augustus, the adopted heir of Julius Caesar, born 69 before the Christian era, given the title Augustus, which meant reverend or to be revered. He had political power, but also religious reverence. Quirinus, it says, was governor of Syria, the Roman province of northeast Judea. And Joseph went with Mary to register on the tax list. They went to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. Why? Because Joseph was a descendant of David. Mary's time for birth came while they were in Bethlehem, laid in a manger because there was no place in the inn. Jesus is born. Jesus' birth is good news for all people, Samaritans and Romans alike. In fact, for all people. We know that from the book of Acts, the second chapter, when we speak of the birth of the church, there were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard a sound, a crowd gathered, they were mystified because Everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya, bordering Cyrene, and visitors even from Rome, Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own language. We have received the gift of Jesus Christ, the Christ. In Hebrew, the Messiah, the anticipated deliverer to initiate God's rule and peace, 
of peace and righteousness. The Messiah, the anointed one in Greek, Christos, meaning God is with us. God's presence and protection are with you even right now. Emmanuel, a child in Isaiah's writings, is so named who will be born. The seventh chapter of the book of Isaiah, therefore the Lord will give you a sign. You will receive a sign. The young woman is pregnant and about to give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. So the Gospels bring true the promise of the prophet. And dear friends, a baby is born this Christmas to remind us that God wins, love wins, and in spite of all that you have been through, we have been through, there is good news this Christmas. 2020 has been a year full of fears and tears and communal disruption for most of the last eight months. I could not go to funerals, hold and hug with freedom. I've been wearing a mask that covers my smile and my dimples. I have been exhausted and distraught by racial discord, injustice, and political pundits. I've been inspired. I have been inspired over and over again by the kindness and compassion of Christians and faithful ones who are looking out for others, those who have cared for the sick and troubled. I marvel at parents pouring love into their children and families. I grieve for the children who need to know they are loved and blessed. I weep for those who are hungry when so much of us have more than enough. The birth of a child is a miracle, a gift to all of us, meaning that we should champion the very belief that children matter most. God's promise to Abraham was that your descendants will be as numerous as the stars. And through your offspring, all nations, all nations of the earth will be blessed. This, friends, is a reminder that babies born from generation to generation are transmitters of hope, signs of wonder, confirmation of God's love. God looked at the human family and decided that Abraham and Sarah were not enough. Moses was not enough. Solomon and Deborah, Ruth, Naomi, prophets were not enough. God decided, I must come myself. The promised gift of life, of hope, of awesome one who comes in good news in a manger. Jesus comes and says to the rich, I am poor. He says, to the poor, I am rich. To the burden, I am rest. To the weak, I am strength. To the fearful, I am joy. To, the, to those who are depressed, I am life. To the lonely, he says, I am friend. To the lost, I am your good shepherd. And to those who are hurting, he says, I am love for you. I hope in 2021, uh, if not the end of 2021 and 2022, you might have an opportunity at some point, or you or your pastor or someone from your church you might sponsor to go to the Holy Land. My wife and I have led groups there over the years. It's always a marvelous experience to go to the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem and to climb down into the, what's called a grotto, which is really a cave the place where they say Jesus was born. It's interesting that this holy land we read about in the Bible, or, or some call it the fifth gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four gospels. The fifth gospel is the land where Jesus walked. It's the land of the Bible. It's amazing that this land is, is less than a third of the size of the state of Indiana. So when you hear names like Galilee and Capernaum and Nazareth and Bethlehem, these are places that are not that far apart. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide in us, our Lord Emmanuel. Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. 
Grant that being born in our hearts, born in our hearts, you may save us from our sins. Restore within us the image and likeness of our creator to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen. Have a blessed Christmas. A blessed Christmas does not dismiss the fact that there has been hurt and pain in 2020. A blessed Christmas gives room for our questions, gives rooms for our, our doubts. A blessed Christmas is a reminder that the baby Jesus who has come, has come for all of us to bless your home and to bless your life and to remind you that you are loved and we are loved. Have a blessed Christmas in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for the world. Oramos por el mundo. God help people that are sick. Dios ayuda a los que están enfermos. God help people that is in war. Is in war. Dios ayuda a aquellos que están en la guerra. God help people that are suffering with COVID. Help their family and friends too. Dios ayuda a los que están sufriendo por COVID. Ayuda a su familia y sus amigos también. God help people that think they have all but they don't have you. Dios ayuda a aquellos que piensan que tienen todo pero no te tienen a ti. God help people that are angry and sad. Dios ayuda a la gente que está enojada y triste. God help children that are orphans and cry. Dios ayuda a los niños que son huérfanos y lloran. God help people who believe in you. Dios ayuda a la gente que cree en ti. The people that not and people do not believe you. And people that they don't believe you. Y a la gente que no cree en ti. God, we live in this amazing world that you created, but sometimes it is very hard. We know that Jesus is the light. We of the world, our Savior and Healer, helps us love one another. Help the world to know that Jesus is the way to you and to heaven. Amen. Dios, Amen. vivimos en este mundo maravilloso que tú has creado, pero a veces es difícil vivir aquí. Sabemos que Jesús es la luz del mundo, nuestro Salvador y nuestro curador. Ayúdanos, por favor, a amarnos unos a otros y que Jesús y que puedan conocer a Jesús y llevarnos a la vida eterna. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén. And now, as the children of God forgiven, redeemed, and connected by God's Holy Spirit, let us lift our voices to God as we boldly pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you prepare to give or send your tither offering, we thank you. Scripture tells us the wise men traveled across a great distance to find the Messiah, alive in the infant Jesus. When they found him, they brought gifts to show their faithful adoration. Thank you for continuing their tradition. Thank you for giving of your time, your talents, and your treasures. Thank you for trusting them to your church that your gifts might be used to glorify God. Thank you for giving.
God bless you, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Es un honor para nosotros el día de hoy estar frente a ustedes. It is a great joy for us and an honor to be before you. Hoy que hemos recibido una palabra poderosa de Navidad. We have received a beautiful and a powerful Christmas message. Donde se nos recuerda y se nos invita a no tener miedo. A message where we have been reminded not to be afraid. Donde nos dan buenas nuevas de que Jesús, el Salvador del mundo, ha nacido. We have been reminded and we are invited to receive those good news that Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, has been born. Así que, amigos, hoy los invitamos a abrazar y llevar a cabo este mensaje de salvación alrededor del mundo. So, friends, we invite you to embrace this Christmas message and let us take this message of salvation to the world. Mi esposa y yo Humildemente queremos declarar esta bendición sobre ustedes. My wife and I want to humbly declare this blessing over you. Que Dios los bendiga. May the Lord bless you. Que Dios los guarde. May the Lord keep you. Que Dios los llene de gracia. May the Lord be gracious to you. Y que Dios les dé paz. And may the Lord give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas, friends.